so the majority of questions that we've been getting regarding the OCaml GUI um, are one, just the role of a widget in a graphics context, two, what is a notifier and a notifier controller, and three, uh, what is a value controller. So um, I'm just going to be doing a, a, a quick and dirty just overview of, of these things. So let's do a quick and crude overview of the GUI. GUI stands for Graphical User Interface. So we're going to be dealing, obviously, with graphics. Graphics, so that's things that you can see. Here's my computer screen. Here's my nice computer with this computer screen. And uh, this computer screen is going to be a graphical area, home to a bunch of different graphical elements. Let's say, for example, that right now my goal is to put this graphical element on the screen. This is just a box with two boxes inside of it that say sys and 120. What is this? This is really just a, a, like I said, a graphical element that takes up a region in my graphics area. So this is just called a widget. A widget is just any, any, any graphical element that's, that's, that you're going to see on the screen. Um, so I want to draw this widget, uh, on the screen. It's not enough for me to just know what the widget is, right? I need to know where to put it on the screen. I need to know what color I'm going to be drawing it with. I need to know uh, the thickness of the pen that I'm going to be using. Am I going to be using a thick pen or a thin pen or an EpiPen, right? I don't know this going in, so I need to have that clearly defined when I'm actually visually putting the widget on the screen. And all that global information that's helping me make it visually appear, I put in my graphics context. Graphics context, or we abbreviate it as GIF. No one knows how to pronounce this. I call it the GIF, G-C-G-S. So let's just say that we are within GIF.ml, right? Capital G, uh, G-C-T-X is the actual module. So uh, GIF.ml contains a lot of different functions and type definitions. The one that we're interested right now in is this lowercase GIF. Um, and what this lowercase gix type within gix.ml is, is this is just our actual graphics context, right? So this is storing all of the global information that we need uh, in order to actually visually make widgets appear. So for example, what is that x, which is an int, y, which is an int, offset um, from the 0, 0 origin uh, in GUI coordinates? What is the current color that we're going to be using? Color is of type graphics.color, I believe. So all this information we keep in this GIF record, right? And why is that important? Well, let's say that now we are within a widget module. Let's look at the type widget. A widget is just a record with three, with three fields, repaint, handle, and size. Let's unpack what each one of these is. So repaint is what enables a widget to, to draw itself. Um, for example, if you have animation, what's going on is, is every so often during the frame rate, you're just going to be uh, redrawing the, the elements on the screen, right? So that's going to be using the widget's repaint functions to do that. Uh, so the repaint needs to take a graphics context so that it knows what color to use, what type of pen to use, where to draw it. You need to feed that information to repaint so that it can use it and properly draw the widget. Uh, and then since it's just drawing it, it's just doing something, it's going to uh, then uh, just do something, type unit. Let's skip handle for now. Size is also pretty straightforward. Size is just taking a unit because it's it, all it's doing is just returning an int by int tuple of the dimensions of the widget. And then handle, what does handle do? Handle enables a widget to uh, process events. So when I say an event, that is something that the user is doing to interact with the program. Um, for example, a mouse click is an event, or um, pressing a key on the keyboard is an event, or dragging the mouse is an event. All those things are events. So uh, how does how does the how do these widgets uh, react to events? You might want something to happen when when there's an event. Um, what actually happens is that the event is rooted through 
the handle functions of the widgets starting at the root in that root hierarchy. So it's, it's essentially passed down um, until the proper widget can handle it. So what's the type of handle? It needs to take the graphics context so that it knows that basic information, the setting, the context, and then it also is going to take the event. What was the event? And then unit. It's just going to do something. It's going to route that down the, down the hierarchy, or it's just going to react to it like it should. So that's the type widget. Let's take a look at another widget example. So here's my widget. Looks pretty simple, right? It's a border around a label when it meets the eye. But there's more going on here than meets the eye. Let's say that when I click on my widget, this is what I want to happen. Okay, I want to play that sound. So uh, let's just have this down here. This isn't this isn't part of the graphics. This is just now for our own visualization. Uh, I'll make this bigger. Mouse click means play sound. Okay, interesting. How do I account for that using what we've learned so far? Some I might say in the handle function, you can you can just you can handle the the event there and then play the sound, which is true. But there are many ways that I might want one uh, widget to, to respond to events. So what's the best way to store and keep track of all these different ways that a widget might respond to events? I use this thing called a notifier. What is a notifier? So think of a notifier as an invisible wrapper around widgets that allows it to do event handling. So I would put the notifier as this invisible wrapper around the label so that in the hierarchy, this is my new widget hierarchy. I have a border around a notifier, which is around the label, right? Uh, and the notifier handles these different events. What the notifier is doing is it's listening for these events. It's waiting for these events to happen. And then once it processes, once it realizes that a, that, that event happened, uh, especially within the, the bounds of it, then it's going to do something. So when it realizes that there's been a mouse click on that widget, it's going to play the sound. This is called an event listener, right? It takes an event, and then it does something. So it's a type unit. Okay, so far so good. But let's say that there's something else going on. Let's say that not only do I want to uh, play a sound when the mouse is clicked, but let's say that I also want to um, make everything black and white when I drag my mouse across the widget. So when I drag my mouse, this is what happens, right? So that's another event listener. Mouse, drag, then black and white, right? You realize that I can have a list of as many event listeners as I wanted. For that reason, the notifier can't just keep track of one event listener in its state. It needs to keep track of a list of event listeners. And if you look at the code, that's what it is. The notifier returns a tuple with a widget and a notifier controller. And inside the state of the notifier, you have a list of event listeners. And those, that list of event listeners is just everything that you want to happen when, when an event happens within the widget. Then what's the point of the notifier controller, you ask? Well, the notifier controller just allows external code to, uh, to add to that list of event listeners, right? Because remember, the list of event listeners is encapsulated inside the state of this notifier. So the notifier controller has this add event listener function, and then the notifier, if you want to visualize it on the tree, has this list, L1, L2, dot, 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 of all of the event listeners that are going to happen when it detects an event. Then what's nifty is once the notifier receives the event, it'll pass that event off to its list of, through its list of event listeners before uh, continuing to pass it down the, the hierarchy tree. So a very common question that we get during office hours for the paint homework is what uh, the point of a value controller is. Um, namely, what uh, is the purpose of the three functions inside of it, get value, set value,
and add change listener. Let's take a look at uh, value controller in action. For this example, boom, right here, this light switch in a Huntsman, in a Huntsman GSR, this is my wizard, okay? Uh, so a light switch right now can have, let's say two states. It can be on, that's a state. It can be off, that's another state. So how do we keep track of the state of the current value of, of the light switch, of on or off? We can use an encapsulated, uh, say, ref type. So we have this encapsulated mutable state that will hold what the current value is, on or off. And if I want to get what the current value is, I have this function, get value. So that's what get value does. Okay, cool. Now we also need to tell OCaml what to do when the state is a certain thing, right? We want to say, if this is off, turn off the light. If this is on, then have the light be on. And the way that we do that is similar to when we were working with notifiers and we had this notion of an event listener, where we were listening for an, a user event. This time, instead of listening to an event for an event, we're going to be listening for change in the state and reacting to change in the state. So we can have this list of change listeners, a list of, of, of functions that will react to what the value is and then do something of type unit. Unit do something in response to that change value. So the first element uh, in, this, in this list of change listeners, the first function could be if on, then uh, great. Brighten it, turn on the light. And then another one can be, if it's off, then dark, turn off the light. Let's say that I also wanted to have something where if it's on, uh, play music. <music> dot, dot, dot. So here's my list of all of the change listeners. Now this list of listeners is going to be encapsulated within the light switch, just like um, the, the state is. So I need to have functionality that allows something external to add a new change listener. And that's where this add change listener function comes from. Okay, so that's get value, that's add change listener. What's the other function that we see in the value controller? We have set value. So set value has two main parts. The first part is pretty obvious. Set value is what actually allows me to go in and turn off the light. Me hitting the light switch is me setting the value. So set value allows me to go in and change that state. But it does another thing too. Not only does it change the state, it also then calls every single function in the list of change listeners with that updated state. And it uses list.iter to go down this list of change listeners with that new state. So that's all the working parts of the value control.